Today, I want to address some fascinating questions about finger anatomy and gripper design. Specifically, why the pinky position on the Hand of God grippers looks so different from what we're used to seeing. This is actually a perfect example of how our perception of normal hand position has been shaped by suboptimal training tools. Let's work through some discussion topics. Among the early reaction to the grippers, the most interesting have been people discussing the offset edges. This is the only publicly disclosed design considerations that I discussed in Grip Gains. It is also what most of the market has been focusing on. When I created Grip Gains, I didn't want it centered on the Hand of God grippers because I wasn't planning to make them. So I built the narrative around offset edges because that is something that can be achieved at home. However, I emphasized that mass market offset edges can actually be less safe than flat edges. You'll want to make this yourself. Get some wood carving skills or get a friend with a 3D printer. A one size fits all option is worse than training on a flat edge in terms of ergonomics. Based on the discourse that I'm seeing online, that prediction is playing out as I predicted. Here is the actual key. Perfect ergonomics is the actual principle, not offset edges. Here are two emails I received this week that illustrate that point. I've battled multiple pulley injuries and setbacks in the past, and I've always been hesitant to seriously approach finger training as a lot of the information out there felt very wishy-washy. The Grip Gain series really resonated with me personally. I should not have been shocked as you emphasize the ergonomics of the Hand of God grippers, but I was incredibly surprised by how comfort and in control I felt when performing the isometric test to set a baseline over a rough power curve. Even after the micro exploded out of my hand for my first set as I was trying to hold on to the very last second, it stung, but it never felt like a danger of re-aggravating an old injury. Another email. I initially thought of the micros as just a custom unlevel edge on rollers, which is still a novel concept, but potentially achievable by a person with materials. However, as I noticed, the different lengths of the blockers, the different thicknesses of the rollers for each finger, the edge at the back, and how they all coordinate to get the same slightly in-cut joint angle for each finger, I can see how much prototyping probably went into making something like this. It is ridiculously optimized. This early feedback is highlighting the point that I just made. The Hand of God grippers are much more than an unlevel edge. The principle is those perfect ergonomics. I've received many questions about the various design considerations. Hand anatomy informs every single aspect. If something looks a certain way, that's completely intentional. Every detail discussed extensively with a specialist hand surgeon over many years. Roller size, roller diameter, roller width, roller position in 3D space, blocker position, blocker angle, blocker morphology, joint angle, joint rotation, gripper body length, rope insertion point, rope height, every visual element reflects an anatomical consideration. All of this is fully parameterized and completely unique for each user. No two grippers are identical. This goes far beyond an offset edge. Calling the Hand of God grippers an offset edge shows a fundamental lack of understanding of hand anatomy and ergonomics. For example, the pinky roller has sparked a lot of curiosity. If the pinky position looks unusual to you, it's because we've been shaped by a generation of training on wooden edges. Our collective perception is influenced by suboptimal tools. A good analogy is modern footwear. This is not reasonable for a human foot, yet we accept it as normal. Let me walk you through some simple exercises that will completely change how you think about natural finger movements. Let's try a quick exercise. Open your hand and let your fingers fall naturally closed. Do you notice anything? They converge to a single point. What is that point? It is the thumb. All fingers are designed so that they oppose the thumb for the critically important pincer grip. Here's another exercise you can try. Sequentially tap your fingers against your thumb. Notice how none of the fingers move perfectly straight across the palm. They're designed to oppose the thumb, not drop straight down the hand as we might imagine from traditional climbing holds. To really see this, touch the pinky to the base of the thumb. It comes across the hand at a 45 degree angle. Another quick exercise. Hold your fingers out straight and sight them down like so. Pay particular attention to the rotation of each individual finger. What you'll notice is that fingers aren't even mounted at the MCP joint in a totally straight plane. Each finger has a different degree of twisting and it's different for everyone. So back to the pinky roller. It looks different because this is what hand anatomy demands. I could force 
a straight pinky like flat edges. But by forcing the pinky straight, that puts unnecessary strain on the collateral ligaments. This is literally the cause of capsulitis in climbing. When you get your hand of God, don't obsess over finger positioning. The pinky roller is designed to be extra wide to let people find their perfect sweet spot. Just pull hard and trust the process. Pinky is living its best life over there in its specialized home. We've just never seen Pinky in its natural habitat before. Next question on a related topic. When you demonstrate correct form for the micro, you show significant flexion in the PIP joint. Is this the intended position for specific FDP training? Wouldn't less flexion in PIP and more of a drag position be better? So the user is asking, essentially, should we do something more akin to the forced extension in the, three, in the classic three finger drag or the anatomical position that the micro enforces. My answer with regards to the classic three finger drag is absolutely not. The drag position exists because it is otherwise impossible to properly isolate FTP on a wooden edge. It is cope because the training tools are suboptimal. That's why wooden edges cannot address a primary flexor imbalance. You'll default to whatever muscle group is strongest. That gets the primary training stimulus and the cycle becomes self-reinforcing. Forced extension during FDP contraction is counterproductive and non-ergonomic. The FDP tendon crosses every joint in the hand and it naturally pulls the fingers into a closing position. We want to properly isolate FDP in its strongest and most ergonomic position, which is exactly what the micro enforces. That way you can focus on those RPE 10 efforts in a maximally strong ergonomic position without the fear of associated soft tissue injury. This is just a few examples of how deeply anatomical principles inform every aspect of gripper design. When something looks unfamiliar, it's often because we've been conditioned by using inferior tools. The goal here isn't to match what we're used to, it's to match what our anatomy actually demands. 